My name's Dale Fox. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tribogenics. And I'm going to tell you a story of an amazing, profound breakthrough in physics that led to a whole new technology that's going to throw on its head everything you think you know about x-rays. First, if you'll indulge me, let's just acknowledge something. X-rays are the foundation of medical diagnosis. They're used in the diagnosis of dozens of diseases by a number of different specialties and in a lot of different fundamental modalities. Since their invention roughly a century ago, they've improved and in some cases saved the lives of millions of people worldwide. Now let me tell you another number. Four billion. It's a little over half the planet. And it's the number of people who have little or no access to x-ray technology. And as a result, their lives are profoundly affected. They have shorter lifespans. They have a lower quality of life and they regularly suffer from diseases and maladies that could be easily diagnosed and sometimes cured if they were here and had the access to the technology that all of us have. Why is that number so big? Part of the problem is that a large number of these folks are in very rural areas. They have poor infrastructure, very little electricity, which is a key problem, and also just generally poor level of medical care. Now, you might say, well, why don't we just take some portable x-ray systems and we can send them out and we can use them in the field? I mean, we do have portable x-ray systems. Well, sort of. This is the state of the art in field x-rays. It's actually pretty profound. It's 175 pounds of equipment on wheeled carts. They use car batteries connected to inverters, or if you're lucky enough, plug-in power. How is it that I've got an iPhone in my pocket with GPS and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and this is the best we can do? I'll tell you why. It's because the x-ray industry never participated in the Silicon Revolution. There was no transistor moment here. Every x-ray in the world is still made fundamentally the same way they were when this place was built. It's high voltage transformers and vacuum tubes. It's Victorian era technology. But it's the best we have. Or should I say it's the best we had? Because about five years ago, a group of physicists working at UCLA came up with a radical invention, the kind of thing that happens once in a lifetime. They discovered a fundamentally new process that makes x-rays. And if you'll pardon the pun, the spark of their innovation is a spark that we all know very well. You're out on a cold winter's morning and you're shuffling across your carpet and socks and you reach for a doorknob and you get that really annoying spark. It turns out that very same process called contact electrification can be harnessed to create x-rays. And we've done exactly that. This, in my hand, is the world's smallest x-ray source and it runs on a 9-volt battery. This is an order of magnitude smaller and more affordable than anything on the market today. And what that means is that for the first time in history, we can chuck that 175 pounds of equipment, and we can build something like this. This is a 30-pound radiology suite in a briefcase, <laughs> fully integrated with batteries and solar power for recharging anywhere in the world. Most important, it has a handle. It can be carried by a human being wherever it's needed. You could even put it in a FedEx box if you wanted to and ship it to any location. Inside of there, you'll find a standard 14 by 17 chest panel coupled to an x-ray source that can take an image of any portion of the human body. Now imagine a doctor in India or, as someone alluded to earlier, in East Africa, roaming from clinic to clinic with lines of patients out the door. They unfold this suitcase, take care of all the patients they can, and then at the end of the day, fold it back up and place it securely in the back of their truck so they can go to the next clinic. Or lock it away in a secure locker so it'll be there the next time they come back. Or let's take another case. Soldier, wounded in the field. Does he need to be evacuated? Or can he be treated on the spot? That's the sort of critical decisions that can be made with this kind of technology. And if you layer on computer-aided diagnostics and teleradiology, 
Now you can even imagine this kind of device being used by a non-specialist, and that opens up a world of possibilities. Now, I don't want to tell you this is just a third world problem. A uh, sports player is injured on the field. He wants to get back in the game as quickly as possible. The quicker you can make that determination, the better. Or perhaps a oil refinery explodes in Texas or Ohio, and there are hundreds or thousands of injured folks, and you need to triage them very quickly in a makeshift tent outside the facility. This is ultimately about bringing diagnostics to the patient instead of the other way around. Now, if you'll just fast forward a little bit, but not too far, you can start to open up a lot more radical solutions here. Instead of a cervical collar, a smart cervical collar, one with an x-ray source and a detector, could be rotated 90 degrees to take the lateral. I was told that 10% of all cases that present to an ER with unconsciousness as a result of an auto accident or a fall involve a serious injury to the cervical spine. Why wait till you get to the hospital to know that? Imagine in the field, you attach a cervical collar, it takes an image. That's transmitted onto a tablet and then onto the receiving hospital. You know what the patient needs before the patient even arrives. For those of you who are working in the ER today, you already get EKGs and other information on the road. Wouldn't it be great to have imaging too? This is just the tip of the iceberg. There is a world of technologies that we can build based on what we're doing at Tribogenics. The one thing I will tell you is that this is the transistor moment for the x-ray industry. And in the future, this technology will be democratized, it will be ubiquitous, and it will look unlike anything you have ever seen before. Thank you.